hundred dollars. It is no more than three hundred dollars you should spend on your very first pair of nice dress shoes. But why? What other cost should you know about? What color and design should you get? Should you buy Allen M's or are there other options to make you look worldly and sophisticated? Is Goodyear wealth really as important as everyone says? And how in the sweet holy walrus do you know what size to get? Rise above the chat and distinguish yourself as a truly competent performer. Oh. The first thing you need to know is to budget between 10 and 20% of the shoes just for shoe care products alone. This is mandatory and you will regret not doing so, though we will talk more about that at the end of the video. As for the shoes themselves, you should plan to spend between two and $300. Within this price range, you can expect a comfortable shoe with real leather uppers, leather soles, and durable refined stitching that will not only last you years, but look sharp all the while. But you can also expect complete garbage in this price range. It is only from a few shoemakers that we'll talk about shortly that you can get this exceptional value. Below $200 and your shoes will almost always be either cemented construction and or use super cheap materials like fake leather, foam insoles, and compressed cardboard. You wanna buy a yacht? Me too. But here's what I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna go out and buy a $600 million yacht. Guys, I don't even know how to sail a boat. And in the process of learning, I'm probably gonna ding a couple coral reefs. Ah, sorry, fragile, irreplaceable ecosystem upon which all life on the planet depends. Just put on my card. Instead, I'll buy the more financially prudent $150 million yacht because just one helipad will suffice for now. Shoes are just like yachts above $300 and you will start to hit diminishing returns in the form of higher stitch densities, better leathers, and more refined last designs. These are all incredibly valuable signs of craftsmanship, but are not likely to matter for your first pair. And I'm not trying to gatekeep here. If you wanna spend more than $300, there are some amazing brands that are totally worth the money. My point is that if you are just looking for that first upgrade to serve you in your career or professional life, 95% of that function can be done by a shoe under $300. And before looking at who those shoemakers are for the best shoes under $300, what exactly is it you should buy? As a general rule of thumb, your shoes should not stand out, though if they are noticed, they should impress. And the most impressive choice you can make is something that is simple, well-made, and classic. Guys, you may have heard it before, I'm telling you again. Dark brown Capto Oxford in full grain calfskin. Why? Because they are the most versatile and go well with every professional setting from business casual to high formal. Black is okay though will be more formal and a little less versatile. Light brown similarly will be too casual. Different designs like derbies, monk straps, or wingtips are all great but can be harder to style and potentially too much of a fashion statement. Remember, not everyone is as in tune with classic menswear as you may be. The last thing you want to do is spend several hundred dollars on a shoe that is sartorially sophisticated, but comes across as gaudy, tone deaf, or self-concerned to your interviewer, director, or clients. This is just your first pair, you can always buy more. Similarly, materials like suede, hatch green, and bread are all stunning in their own right, though are more stylistic in nature and should be reserved for your second, third, or fourth pairs. As for soles, your choice boils down to leather or synthetic. Some companies will offer both with little to no difference in price. Leather will always be more classic and is a hallmark of quality and taste. It's okay for leather to get wet from time to time, though if you frequently find yourself walking in the rain or snow, a synthetic sole will better help preserve the integrity of your shoe. If you really want a little more expression, you can go with a dark burgundy color or a quarter brogue or balmoral design. These choices will be a little more sophisticated while still remaining subdued. But for your very first pair, I suggest playing it safe and sticking with the Dibikatovkaga. So, you know how much to pay for your shoes and what to buy. But from where do you buy them? Well, the first thing to know is where not to buy them. Don't buy from department stores. No. Don't buy whatever Instagram is pushing you. No. 
No. Regardless of the quality, that stuff is all going to be dramatically overpriced due to the massive logistical and marketing overhead required to put that product in front of you. Here is the absolute best quality for stitched leather footwear under $300 in the world. CNES out of Vietnam, they have a very well-made shoe with lovely sole work. With shipping, they will land right around the $300 mark. From Bridlin, we have what are, in my opinion, the best value in the world for entry-level Goodyear welted and Blake stitch footwear. They are based out of India and their main line comes to about $250 with free shipping and a closed channel stitch. They actually own the factory in which their shoes are made, which is always a good sign. Bridlin has a YouTube channel. I'll link it below if you want to check them out. Blackbird is another company out of India. They are very exciting. They make a very nice hand welted shoe that comes to a little under $200 with shipping. They are one of the rare exceptions where under $200 still gets you an exceptional product. Skolix is a Swedish company that manufactures in Spain, offering shoes in the mid 200s with city soles. And Spain is a country known for its exceptionalism in shoemaking. Meerman is a Spanish Spanish company that manufactures their shoes in China, they are around $200 and make a great Goodyear welted shoe, though they are notorious for using very stiff leather that takes a long time to break in. It's not the end of the world, though it is something to keep in mind. Beckett Simonon, this is an American company that manufactures in Colombia. Everything they offer is Blake Stitch, and you might be wondering, well, everyone tells me I should get Goodyear welt, shouldn't I go with that? We'll talk about that in the next section. For now, Beckett Simonon offers a variety of shoes for a little over $200 with free shipping, though they occasionally go on sale or offer discounts for 10 to 20% off. And lastly, we have Thursday Boot Company. Thursday is another American company that manufactures largely out of Lyon, Mexico. They are known for their boots, and I actually own their Chelsea's, they're quite nice. They have Oxfords for about $170 with free shipping. You know, they're not great, but they are real leather Goodyear welted shoes for $170. If you are constrained by budget, they will do the job. There are other options under $300, though the best value in the world is going to come from these companies. Now, some people may scoff at the latter two options, and these companies will be the lowest value on the list in terms of the shoe itself. But when you are buying from these American companies, part of what you're paying for is a risk-free, stress-free transaction. Free shipping, free returns, no questions asked, fast and responsive customer service, and the comfort of ordering from a domestic company. With that considered, I think Beckett, Simonon, and Thursday both offer a great value, which is why I include them here. And all of these companies will have higher quality shoes than Allen Edmonds with better materials, better craftsmanship and a lower price. I know that may come as a surprise to some people, but times have changed. Allen Edmonds used to be a good value, but it's not anymore even on sale. The company has changed hands four different times. The quality has plummeted. It's been involved with private equity. And guys, if you know anything about American business, you know it would be surprising if it was a good value after all that. Save your money, save yourself. Buy something that's well-made from people who care about shoes that makes you look sharp, sophisticated, and worldly. And on the subject of things you've probably been told that aren't entirely true, let's talk about Blake Stitch and Goodyear Welt. I love Blake Stitch dress shoes. And much like the responsibility American credit rating agencies had for the great financial crisis of 2008, I think they are criminally overlooked. They present the perfect opportunity to get stitched leather dress shoes made with high quality craftsmanship and materials without having to pay several hundred dollars. You remember when I said under $200 is likely poor quality? That applies to Goodyear welted shoes, not Blake. Bridland, for example, has Blake shoes for $111 and they use leather from some of the most reputable tanneries in the world. Which by the way, is insane. That is a crazy good value. There's nothing else on the market that even comes close. Do you believe me? Can you believe me? Ah! I mean, I myself cannot. Ah! When I first saw it, I was like, where's the trick? Like, this is just such a good deal. It's incredible. Ah! Hi. You're all good. All right, well, someone just saw me, and now that was awkward. But. 
Guys, if you want to roll with the big boys, you got to get Goodyear Weld because it's got, it, it, it lasts forever. It's got the cork. It's got, you know, it's just, you just, you got to get it, right? I could make an entirely separate video detailing how shoes are constructed and the common misconceptions about Goodyear Weld and how it compares to Blake Stitch. And at some point I will, but for now, it's important to know that while Goodyear Weld is indeed superior to Blake, the ways in which it is will not matter much for your first pair of shoes. For example, one of the biggest selling points for Goodyear Welted shoes is that they will last forever, which is true. They can be resold to extend their lifespan, typically once every two to four years. But a proper resole by a skilled cobbler may cost more than half the price of the shoe itself. And at that point, just get a brand new pair of shoes. You will want to anyway, because your upper will likely be in pretty rough shape as you learn to walk in and maintain them. And yes, much like learning to be spatially cognizant of your car to avoid bumping it, there is a skill to walking in nice stress shoes and being particularly considerate of things like opening a door on your toe or tripping on a sidewalk. There is nothing wrong with this. We all go through it. It is just part of learning to use these luxury items, but it does mean your first pair probably won't last forever. And that's okay. They're not work boots, they're dress shoes. Remember guys, these are an investment. You will make back many times their cost on the impact on your career and income, but only if they are kept in good condition because that's the whole point to begin with. It is not only reasonable, but in fact financially prudent to plan to replace your first pair after a few years have passed. <sighs> Look, let me put it into perspective. I someone who is so mentally ill about this topic that I made a 65 minute video on it, would rather have a well-made, good looking Blake shoe than a dumpy looking Goodyear welted shoe. I'd rather have two great Blake shoes than one great Goodyear welted shoe. And my point isn't to not buy Goodyear welt. If you are comfortable with a budget of $300, Bridlin and CNS make incredible shoes and you will be grateful you spent the money. My point is, don't think you even have to spend that much. If dress shoes could improve your life right now, but you are financially constrained, don't think you need to wait months for a sale or stretch your budget because someone on the internet echo chamber said you need Goodyear welted shoes. There is no reason that your first high quality stitched leather dress shoe that you can take pride in wearing can't be Blake Stitch. Ah! So now you know how much to pay, what to buy, and from where to buy it. But what size do you get? In a meta study of existing research conducted by doctors Hilton Menz and Andrew Bolt, it was concluded that the amount of the population that wears the wrong size of shoes was up to 72%. And because feet and shoes are so geometrically intricate and there is no globally standardized system for foot measurement, your shoe size may not just vary from product to product, but even from brand to brand. So you have to check with each company individually. But none of the companies I've listed here have storefront where you can go and get your foot measured. How are you gonna know what size to get? What are you gonna do, email them? Yeah. It can be a little bit nerve wracking to order from an international company. However, the ones I listed here regularly do business with US consumers and they are very accustomed to helping them. These are small companies run by people who are passionate about their product. They want you to love their shoes as much as they do and they are more than happy to help you find the right size. So you write them an email, but what do you put in that email? Place your foot on a blank sheet sheet of paper and draw an outline around it. Measure from the tip of your big toe to the end of your heel. That is your length. Then measure the width of the ball of your foot, the widest part. That is your width. That's all you really need to do, though if you want to be extra safe, using a tape measure, take the circumference of the ball of your foot. Lastly, do the same with your instep. Write these measurements down and email them to the company asking for their recommendation. Include any quirks your feet may have or fit preferences. Pictures and video are also helpful. I know it's tedious, but honestly guys, between the quality of the shoe and the price itself, you are saving literally 
hundreds of dollars by doing this simple process as opposed to buying whatever is in the department store. Lastly, let's return to price. Yes, you will need to spend between 10 and 20% of the price of the shoes just on shoe care products alone. And I know that's rough to hear, but trust me, that is the cheapest way to go about it. If you try to skip out on tire or oil changes for your new car, you will eventually end up paying way more when it finally breaks down. Shoes are the same way. Going to a cobbler is way more expensive and time consuming than just doing proper basic shoe care yourself. So what shoe care products should you buy? From where should you buy them? What is the difference between conditioner, polish, and wax? And why is this strange, strange man yelling at me about shoes? These are all excellent questions that would make this video far too long, but that is exactly why I have a second video discussing everything you need to know about shoe care products right here. It's right here. Click, click, right, click, right up in this box. Book the consulting session first and then watch the video. Watch just, it's a good video. I go absolutely mental around the 17 minute mark. Just watch it. It's a good video. Just, just watch, just watch the video. I love you.